Jane Rothschild has been working and volunteering in the field of education for the past 30 years. She has served as an education docent at the Spurtis Museum in Chicago and worked as a coordinator of a literacy program in the Evanston Public Schools for more than a decade. She has also tutored students and trained staff in community-based after-school and summer programs. And in her early 50s, Jane went back to school for her master's in order to become a classroom teacher. And she taught in the elementary grades at Baker Demonstration School in Wilmette until retiring from the classroom. These days, still at, I know, I know. The, the speakers tonight have these incredibly rich careers. No one's bio is short. Uh, <laughs> These days, Jane teaches adult learners at Literacy Chicago and continues to work as a student services support teacher with grade school children. Jane Rothschild, please come tell us about a book that changed your life. Mm. Okay. This has to get down. Thank you so much, Dora. Um, I'm so happy to be here tonight to help support Literacy Works and its important mission. And I'm so full of admiration for the work that's being done and for the dedication of the amazing staff that I've gotten to know this past year. Like many of you, or it sounds like all of you in this room, books and reading have always been a big part of my life. And I feel very fortunate that my parents, who were voracious readers, passed on their love of books to me and my siblings. As children, we love to be read to and to read on our own. My younger sisters and I, one of whom is here, uh, had a favorite story when we were little. It was called Locked In. We read it over and over and over. The story was about two little girls who are so engrossed in their reading that they accidentally get left behind when their small town library gets closed up for the night. They cope bravely with their very mild predicament until they are safely rescued. <laughs> and although my siblings and I read and enjoyed all kinds of books, this story about locked, being locked in a library full of books was our kind of adventure. I was also lucky to learn as a child that people like talking about books as well as reading them. For many years, our parents were part of a book group, and once or twice a year, the meeting was held at our house. I vividly remember sitting on the stairs out of sight of the adults when my parents hosted the group, listening to the grown-ups talk in the living room. Even though I didn't really understand much of what I heard, I somehow did understand that these were serious discussions and that grown-ups were not really talking about what happened in the novels or short stories that they read. They were talking about what the book meant. But I wondered, how did they know? And how did they have so much to say? Later, from my favorite teachers in school and from my mom, who became a great books leader, I learned about close reading and analysis of texts and about symbolism and sentence structure. And I learned that there were ways to understand an author's meaning through a process of inquiry. Oh, so reading and rereading the words on the page and questioning as you read, this is how you have a lot to say about a book. In high school and college, I loved the teachers who were sticklers about backing up one's ideas with evidence from the text, studying Moby Dick in high school with my English teacher, or reading Old Testament stories with a literature professor in college were highlights of my schooling. If you offered an opinion about a book, these teachers would say, OK, great, but how do you know? Their questions helped me understand that the words an author chooses are not accidents. The words are messages, sometimes coded messages, and it's our job as readers to decipher them. When I got to be an adult, I assumed I would join a book group like my parents had had. I tried a few, but I never quite found one like the one I had eavesdropped on as a child. After a while, I let go of my search. One day, though, as a brand new teacher, I found the book group that I had been looking for in an unexpected place. 
a grade school classroom, and with unexpected people, grade school students. And here I am finally getting to a book that changed my life, which is this book by Cynthia Ryland. It's called Every Living Thing. And it's a wonderful book, and it's a collection of beautiful, realistic short stories for young readers about everyday losses and loneliness and the transforming power of connection and friendship. Studying and talking about these short stories, I discovered that with guidance and practice, children are just as capable as adults of engaging in the wonderful adventure of reading and exploring a book. And through reading the stories in Every Living Thing, and then with other texts, I realized that fifth graders, who by the way are 10 and 11, could read a story, look past the plot, could identify its theme and its message. And in reading more deeply, students could examine details and symbols that explain, for example, why a school lunch of a butter sandwich might tell us about a character's home life, or how a tired father's thick shoes might give us insight into how hard he works for his family. I learned that even younger children could also engage in this work. A seven-year-old, for example, responding to a picture book, able to support her idea that a character who tiptoes past his sleeping sister's room on a Saturday morning is a kind and caring person. Yes, that's great, I said, but how do you know? Well, the second grader answered, tiptoeing is quiet. If he didn't care about waking her, he'd just walk regular. So over the years, conversations about novels and short stories, myths and poems, and even picture books have continued to reinforce this realization. Children are able to read deeply, to question texts, and to discuss books with insight. And Every Living Thing was the first book to show me that. Although I don't have my own grade school classroom anymore, I recently had the pleasure of sitting in as a new crop of fifth graders discussed one of Ryland's stories. As I listened to their conversation with their wonderful teacher, who's sitting right there, it was as if I was back sitting on the stairs at home. Only this time I was listening not to the grown-ups, but to students who were deciphering messages and unlocking a writer's meaning. And so, thank you to Cynthia Ryland and her stories in Every Living Thing for, as it turns out, I did finally find my book group. <laughs>